Welcome to Do That Well. I'm your host, Brenda Brown, and virtually along my side, Karen Thrall. Today on Do That Well, we are going to discuss something that was actually inspired by moi, myself. Uh, During this ongoing pandemic, we have had so much virtual communication. And at first, it was a really fun Mm -hmm. way for me to be able to stay connected with my friends, virtual happy hours, yay. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, it started to feel like this draining task. (laughs) It was just another, it was another thing on my to-do list. It was another, Mm -hmm. you know, box that I had to tick. Mm -hmm. And I found that I am not alone. I've been talking Mm -hmm. to friends and family and other people are starting to feel this fatigue when it comes to virtually hanging out um, Mm -hmm. to the point where now it's starting, now that things are starting to open a bit and you can, you know, I've been socially distancing walks and things like that, but even that is starting to feel draining. It's like I've forgotten how to socialize. Mm -hmm. Like the spontaneity aspect isn't there. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so I brought this to you, Karen, and it's just something that's been on my mind and I was thinking, how do we get to the bottom of this? How do mm-hmm. I take back, you know, my friendships <laughs> so that they can be something that is exciting and fun mm-hmm. and I want to see my friends rather than mm-hmm. it feeling like another thing on my to-do list? Yeah. So and that's the inspiration today. <laughs> and it was and what was interesting even in that was when we you first brought it up, I didn't even connect to it at first because I thought you were talking about Zoom meetings at work. And you know, have good, people working virtually, or is really people are really enjoying it? And so then we realized before we even start, we were about to record the podcast and realized we weren't even talking about the same thing. And then we really started talking about. It. Then we got really honest about it. And this whole draining—it's just another thing you check off. The spontaneity is gone. It's—it just doesn't have the same flair, and it, it's making. Me, you, many people question how does relationship work and what do I do with my friends and what's going on with me and why am I tired or why am I not as pro- proactive and that. So it really stirred up a lot of conversation between us. So today's podcast is, is a good raw one. It's a good raw one. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And it's interesting as well with this virtual or distanced hanging that we have to do with our friends. Again, at first it was still really exciting because it was a way that we were able to stay connected. And at some point it shifted and Mm -hmm. I want to be excited. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. this thing where I will reach out to a friend and I'm really amped up. Yes, let's do virtual book club. This is going to (laughs) be great. Yeah. And then when it actually comes, it feels like, oh no, I have to check, I have to get on that meeting at two o'clock. But it's yeah. not just a meeting, yeah. it's fun friend yeah. time. Yeah. So where did that excitement go? And I think yeah. when you say spontaneity, Karen, I think that really ticks mm-hmm. ticks a box. I think that is a large part of what we're missing. Mm-hmm. It's like the, how did friendship become scheduled? Our whole lives, you know, when you're little, you, mom, I'm going to my friend's house. And you knock on the door and say, hey, can so-and-so come out and play? Like there was, there wasn't this, there wasn't really a schedule. You just kind of gathered or even with your friends socially, it, it wasn't scheduled, even though technically it is, even if there was no, no social distancing, you still had to like plan a little bit, you know, hey, what are you doing Friday night? But now it feels more like a schedule than, hey, what are you doing Friday night? <laughs> Just it's something shifted. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And of course, what we're talking about is specific to the current world that we're living in with being in a pandemic. And it, it's not always going to be this way. Things will start to change and we'll start to return to whatever mm-hmm. our normal looks like. But I think that even pre-pandemic, pre all of these virtual hang hangout sessions, this was still something I would run into. Yeah. Okay. So here's what I've been mulling around. Uh, I've been thinking of 
how friendship and relationships, there is a, a current, there's a flow. And now with some people, it feels like um, th- th- there isn't a current, it's just still waters, you know, and th- there's no current, but yet my heart is full of love. <laughs> so it's like, oh, well, my heart's full of love. So it's not like, so what's my problem? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? And I do have some thoughts on that, that to entertain, for us to entertain. And it is something I do in coaching, but I'd love to try it out on this topic and just see, see what happens. Okay. So I'm just going to yeah. dive in. Okay. And I told you about it. It's a color, like use colors. And so for people listening, I'm going to, we're going to talk about seven colors of relationships, seven colors. Okay. There's the, the, the first one's green and then it's blue and then it's yellow and then it's orange and then it's red and then it's gray and then it's black. Okay. So those are the colors and each one symbolizes a form of relationship and there's flow and movement that goes throughout it. And I think as we talk about it, and I'm curious to hear what you have to say, are we trying to force chemistry into these relationships and it's feeling forced and not like you said, like that task feels like another task. Right. And when you first introduced the concept of the colors to me, Karen, I think it really resonated and it will start to make more sense for our audience as well in just a moment here. But it really resonated for me because it provides a framework for how to yeah. l- look at your relationships, where yeah. you, where you want to place value. And it takes out some of that guesswork, so to speak, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of, of you know where you would want to invest your time because mm-hmm. it is – going to be individual for every person. This isn't necessarily mm-hmm. a definitive rule book on how to value or view your relationships, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it does provide a framework which is really yeah. exciting. Yeah. And I think what I was saying about the movement is you're going to move, people are moving around in those colors. And I, I think okay, so remember green, blue, yellow, orange, red, gray, black. Very, very few people are going to be in the black category. Like you can count them on a ha- one hand. Okay. And then we'll get to that. And that's just closure. And it's the term, it's a, it, it's not going to move forward with you. So, you know, it's not going to move ahead with you. So, but the green, okay. So how I want us to do it is think of the very closest person to your heart, like the absolute, they know you inside out. They know the good, the bad, the ugly, the glory, the guts, they know it all. And they are consistently there for you. Regardless, you can turn to them in your most weakest time and you can turn to them in your most celebratory time. There's a trust, there's a respect, there is a mutual reciprocity that that person that is very, very intimate to you. So you think of that and there's going to be levels so it could be family members, it could be your your high school best friend that just, you don't have to always see them, but they are in that green circle, okay? They're very, very intimate. That's your green circle. So right now, like you think of somebody, okay, so I got somebody in my mind, okay, that is my green circle. There it is. That's my green circle. Then you move into um, blue, and blue is not quite green, but it's awesome. <laughs> blue is like, oh my gosh, like I, you, I do feel really known. I feel such a deep connection to you. So that's the blue. So just in those two, before we move on to the other ones, the, so these two, the green is the most intimate, close relationship you can have. Do you do Zoom calls with them all the time? Do you schedule with them all the time? Do you do all these things? And is it a task-oriented relationship? No, it flows. It just randomly flows. There is no nothing. There is absolutely no nothing. And that's that green. It's just, it, it's just so close. And then the blue is almost green. Like it's, it's those friendships and relationships that are just so connected to you and you just fall right into it just like that. No, it's effortless, zero effort. And you just, you may not see them, but you fall right into it again. So first I want to talk about those two colors. Okay. And so I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on those two colors. 
Well, right away when you give this example of the green and thinking of how the the flow, as you said, that word flow, thinking of how with the green relationships there there isn't. There's not that sense of, oh, this is a task. Yeah. yeah. There's there's not this feeling of I need to schedule a Zoom with you. Like yeah. it just yeah. it just is. Mm-hmm. And my curiosity, Karen, and maybe this is a different color category, but my question for you is, what about those friendships that are almost um, like a family relationship, but it's not it's not somebody that's in your family? So I think of friends that I've had that I know that even if I don't talk to them for six months to a year, I can pick up a phone and we're going to be able to pick up right where we left. So there is that closeness, but there's not closeness in the sense that I'm not having daily communication with them. Are they my green or are they a different category? Okay. So, and then again, we're just, this is philosophy, right? We're just kind of, right. I think that's the next one. I think that is the um, yellow. Okay. And I think (laughs) they may not truly know you, but you are, you are so loved. There is such a belovedness. And you are so happy to see them and they just warm your heart. But do they truly know you? Maybe they did at one time, but they have a permanent place in your life. You will always love them. You can't not. The connection, the chemistry. And I have incredible people in that yellow and I just absolutely love them. It wouldn't matter if I don't talk to them for a year and they text me. I'm like, oh look who texts me. It just will never go away. And I think that's yellow. And there's not tons of investment there. It's just, it's already established. Those are the already established relationships. And I think you just are just thrilled. And if, if you do connect, you just open up and you just start sharing your lies and it's just not hard. And I think that's the yellow. No, this is great. This is great. This yeah. is perfect because it that's exactly what I was hoping this would do. It's we're starting to illustrate. You can start to see how even though somebody that's in my yellow category might mean the world to me and there's yes. so much love there. Yes. But it, they are not going to have the same expectations. We're not going yeah. to have the same yes. flow of yes. communication. There's a different dynamic that's set up. So even though the love might be equal, because they're that yellow, because it's a little bit different than the green, mm-hmm. then that means I get to treat those relationships differently. Yes. Okay. This is so good. And can you, because you actually triggered a thought that you brought up when we were prepping, so I cannot take it from you. And that's the word of expectation. You actually brought up expectations when we were prepping. So, yes. Yes. Definitely. Because so, you just you just said that I'm like, oh right, that is a really important piece. Go ahead, tag. You're it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with this framework that we're providing, and as we start to discover for ourselves where our different friendships are in this rainbow of mm-hmm. friendship, that's what I'm dubbing mm-hmm. it because there's seven yeah, colors. I'm calling like it the it. rainbow of friendship. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Um. But I like that it, again, gives us a framework because with every group, you're going to have different expectations when it comes to how often do you Mm -hmm. communicate with that person? Mm -hmm. Do I expect them to schedule a Zoom hangout with me? Do I not expect that? Do they expect that from me? And so with every one of these groups, of these friend groups, color groups, that you're going to have different expectations that apply. And I Mm -hmm. think that allows you or informs a bit how much effort or how much time Mm -hmm. or how many Zoom calls you want to schedule with those people Mm -hmm. because it's going to be different. Yeah, I do. That's so good because I do have expectations in the green circle. I do. I, and if you're going to be in the green circle, I, I'm naturally going to have an expectation because that is the most intimate. You are in the inner, most inner circle. Like there is no, you can't get any closer. So I am going to have higher expectation, higher trust needs, higher, um, higher uh, forgiveness, higher unconditional, higher, like I'm just going to have, function at a higher level. But there, the people in there, naturally fulfill that. They naturally become that. It is not fair for me to put a friend in the green with these unspoken expectations. And I think that's where disappointment comes or when they become a task, 
what? Friendships aren't supposed to be a task. Could it be that you just have them in the wrong color? So even in the love color, the green, green, blue, yellow, I love the every one of them. I love every single one of them. But the yellow expectation is much lower. And, and they bring me great joy, but I do not have the expectations I would have on the green. I would not have the deep, that deep level of trust I would have at the green and even blue. And I think what I love about that is all three of these are, it's a deep love. It's an affection. It's, it's natural. It's just, you just smile when you think of them and they're not going anywhere. But the, I, you're right. The expectation level is very different in those three, in those three. Those are the close, that's the close colors. The close knit colors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I have a friend. So I have a friend. Um, a shout out to Lisa, Lisa Coons. I love her. I, I mean, I love her forever and ever. I never see her, haven't seen her in a bajillion years. We don't talk on the phone, but she has a place in my heart. She is my friend and she will always be my friend. And I seriously have not seen her in many, many years. And we don't talk or catch up many, many, many years. It doesn't matter. She's one. I can't, she won't go away. She lives in there. <laughs> and that's from when I was 19, right? I have another friend, Angela. I've known her since I was nine and Anne, you know, they were like, they're when I was little, but I just love them and I never see them and they're, they're permanently there. So I would put them in the yellow because they will always have a special place in my heart. I like that. I'm just, I'm already feeling, what's the word I'm looking for? Some validation maybe as I hear these different groups and I'm thinking of my friendships and I'm already mm-hmm. starting to be able to place people into yeah, yeah. The, the categories that we've discussed so far. And when I say it like that, actually, I just caught myself because when I say it like that, I'm placing people into categories. <laughs> it, it sounds a little like... yeah. I don't know, yeah. antiseptic or something. It, <laughs> it makes it seem like I'm not valuing my friendships, but I am. And mm-hmm. I think if anything, this is a way for me to come and be an even more present friend because I'm mm-hmm. going to be able to start putting my energy into the right pots, mm-hmm. right colors. Mm-hmm. And the blues, and I think the blues, what I like about the blues, the blues, I think they ebb and flow. I think the blues, depending on the situation or the environment or the time, they have a place where they they dip into the green and maybe they go back into blue and sometimes they may be yellow for six months or a year or two years, but then they're blue. Like they, I I find the blues are the ones who have a lot of movement. They can be found in many places. You know, they can ebb and flow and kind of dip in and dip out. (laughs) Yeah. So again, so then I'll the just we'll say, color? yeah, the next one is orange and red. Okay. So what I, how I describe orange is orange is uh, a functional relationship, you know, cause they get so close at work, but they don't hang out. Their families don't hang out. They don't do anything social, but at work they, they're so bonded. And there's many countless people that have really, really strong colleagues and working relationships. And it just works in the right environment. Can it translate into every day? Maybe not. You know, can you go on business trips? Yes, I can totally go on a business trip. But would I go away for the weekend to Mexico? I don't know if I'd do that part, you know. So it's just this thing of um, the orange is like a colleague peer to peer and it in a specific environment. And But as soon as you leave that environment, it's not going to carry on. It's only the environment that causes the closeness. But once the environment's gone, it's not going to do anything. And in that environment, there's not a lot of vulnerable, intimate conversations that would go deeper than the environment. So there may be an intimate conversation about work and colleagues and job and tasks and boss, but it may not carry on into, and maybe there will be occasionally some really raw, open, honest, like maybe if you were really sick and you came to work and they cared and went, oh man, you don't look good. You should go home. And can I get you anything? You want me, why don't I drop by and bring you soup? There may be some of that, but it's not going to be this, you know, once, once the environment's over, 
the relationship moves on and there's no big pining or missing or anything. You kind of go, oh, it was so fun working with them, but I wonder how they are. I wonder what they're doing these days. So that would be the, the orange. And the red is transactional. The red is friendly. It has, you don't know who I am. I don't know who you are, but it's friendly. And that would be like the barista at a, at a coffee shop. You're going to keep going to that coffee shop because you like the barista. Brista, you just get along. You guys have a great sense of humor. You think they're hysterically funny. And then one day they're not there. And so the manager goes, oh, they switched. They 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 moved to, you know, wherever. And you're like, ah, I'm going to miss them. Anyways, can I have a cup of coffee? <laughs> like it's, it's, it's a transactional, friendly relationship. So those are those two. So they don't have as much commitment to them. And they're very temporary, very temporary. I think the orange category for myself, like that's the really tricky one. I think that's the one where I oftentimes will try to transition an orange category into something more or I'll treat the orange category as if it's actually a blue or green category. And I think that's the place that I start to find myself really then start to feel like, oh, I shouldn't have planned this weekend activity with this person because now I really want my weekend to myself or yes. whatever it may be. I think that's the one that I find I get in trouble with. Yeah. Okay. And if I we go there, so your friend Joe, he, you met Joe through work and now you guys are like, he's one of your closest friends. That does happen, but that's the exception, not the rule. Very few times will, and I know we did a podcast episode on friendships in the workplace. We did do that. And this, that would be this color. Like when we did that podcast, we were talking about this orange color, yet Joe somehow managed to filter through that orange and move his way up the ladder, <laughs> you know, so he, <laughs> he, he managed to, to get a stronger connection with you than all the other people that you worked with. And so sometimes it does happen, but you're right. Like we put a lot of pressure and we miss, we misunderstand what's going on and we think, oh, wow, this, this is my friend. And it turns out, no, no, they're not necessarily your friend. They're just a temporary friend for this moment in this environment, you know. But yeah, it is. I think a lot of people go through that. Also, flipping it, they get lonely at the workplace because they don't have friends. Well, you do actually. They're just orange. (laughs) Okay, so I'm really curious to hear about the gray and the black. Okay. Because they they don't get colors. They get shades. No, they do not. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, now this is, I, I'm thinking as I'm talking, because this is the stuff I'm using upon. There's a gray. And the gray one is, we've drifted apart. We don't have the connection like we used to. We were misunderstanding each other. I feel a little hurt. Um, all that. Um, we're just, it's just not the same anymore. So much has changed. It's just not the same. That's like a holding tank. <laughs> That's a holding tank. And you're trying to figure out what to do with where you feel hurt or detached or disconnected. You, you've got them in a little holding tank, but they're not going to stay there. You just, where do I, are they red? Are they orange? Are they yellow? Are they blue? Are they green? I don't know. And so you're, you're putting them in a holding tank because you're trying to figure it out. And maybe it's forgiveness. Maybe you're going to have to talk to them. Maybe not. Maybe it's just time, time heals. Maybe there's so much change that you, maybe they were so intimate to you, but there's so much change. Now you're like, I, is it bad that they're just a red? Like, I feel guilty. Like you're, those are in holding tanks and they're going to go back into the color. They're just, you're just not sure. You're unsure and uncertain about those relationships. And so you're trying to process. What do you think? That's my little... (laughs) No, so I'm I'm curious about the black. I'm thinking I've been thinking about it. Somebody that's in a black the black category for you. It almost feels like the black they're there because you actively have some dissonance with them. Because for me, I'm trying to think of my own life and people that I would maybe place in the black category, and I don't think that I can have anybody that I would say is black, but I have lots of relationships that have just ended and maybe they did end on a bad note, but at this point it's just like, yeah, you know, what, they're probably in the red. 
Yeah, they're red. They're amicable and friendly. And, you know, if you see them like, oh, my gosh, hi, how are you? Okay, 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 we'll see you later. Like, it's red. It's not, there's no big commitment, but it's fine. Like that? Yeah, I think so. So it's like black is when you really, there's some, there's some dissonance there, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. And that's why there should be very, 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 very few people in there. I, okay, I, I, and time. You know, sometimes time will heal that, you know, and they can move more into the red. And I th- I think so. But it, I think to be tender and compassionate when someone puts somebody there so that they can, they may have to go to counseling. Maybe there is really broken trust. And so the fact that they can't even do red because the trust has been broken so deeply. But I think that that is something that would probably need counseling. I think that you're going to have to, f- f- because forgiveness ultimately takes pe- people out of that place. You know, I think forgiveness and and um, finding your wholeness again and getting perspective and realizing the, how much you've changed and grown, all those things, which moves them out of the black and puts them into the red. But I think it is real. And I think, think it's not so quick to solve and I think that's where we need to just be a little more patient with people when they decide someone's going to be in the black (laughs) because (laughs) it's them trying to protect themselves and they're just sorting it out but there's an interesting gray the gray and the black because the gray is I uh, what's going on I'm not sure where I'm not sure what's going happening here and I feel a little hurt or whatever I feel distant or we've times have changed I just ah and so they just are in there temporarily until you've kind of figured it out. Now, this is just me. This is philosophy. Like, I'm just telling you some ideas. These are ideas. There's not, there's no absolutes in here whatsoever, whatsoever. <laughs> right. So as we were saying, it, it is a framework. And you are just giving us, like, a guideline. But every single person now needs to go through this exercise of identifying for themselves, okay, who's in each group? What are my expectations for that group? What are – you know, mm-hmm. what do I want to give? What do I want out of it? Do I have too many people in my green group? And that's why I'm feeling spread thin. Wow, good point. Do, do I need mm-hmm. to transition some of these people from green to blue? Or do mm-hmm. I have people that are in my orange that I'm trying to pretend like they're a yellow? Yeah. And I, I think it just yeah. starts to allow you to see from looking at these groups and where you're placing people, then if you're using your time wisely, because I think that's where some of this feeling of it's another journey task, it's another thing on my to-do list, it's because you're probably spreading yourself too thin. So if you take a moment to see, okay, well, yeah, I'm spreading myself too thin because I have 50 mm-hmm. people that mm-hmm. I think are yes. green and they're yes. likely not all actually green. No. That's that draining task thing, going back to that again, Mm -hmm. I can't help but wonder if that is part of the reason that sometimes these friendships feel like a draining task because I'm looking at a friendship that's a yellow or an orange friendship and in my mind, it should be effortless and it should Mm -hmm. transcend time like Mm -hmm. my green friendship, but it doesn't. It requires the time. So if I can just remember that for myself, well, this is a yellow friendship, so it requires this amount of time. And then I'm going into it. I think just understanding it helps it feel better. It makes it feel less stressful if you can Mm -hmm. grasp it mentally Mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I think we Anyhow, solved it. we've covered a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think, oh my gosh, I think we solved it. We're done. Boom. Okay, world's changed. That was it. That was it. <laughs> I know that this re- has really helped me. Again, yeah, me I too. for me, I think just the understanding. The understanding of I don't need to give every single friendship the, it's the same amount of time. I don't need to give friendship, every single friendship, the same amount of value. I don't need to give every friendship the same amount of myself. I don't need all the same things back. Yeah. And I think the more you can understand and start to know for yourself where you're placing your value, where you're placing your expectations, so on and so forth, 
that can help to negate some of that stress that you might feel with certain relationships because it's allowing you the permission to relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Uh, on that note, we are out of time for today's episode. I feel like we could continue to talk about this mm -hmm. for hours and hours. Yes. Because it's a actually very complex topic. But we will stop there for today, having gone through our rainbow of friendship trademark uh, <laughs> <laughs> and thank you all for joining us today and we hope to see you again next week on yeah. do that well <laughs>